Feminist Creativers presents a word for every generation that knows no fashion. Greetings, I hope and trust. I find you all my dear friends and welcome to yet another installment of MNS Creativers. We are on episode three on the signs of the times. I invite you to the book of Luke. We're still at chapter 21. We want to read from verse 12, work our way up to verse 18. The Bible provides as follows. But before all these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. And it shall turn out to you for a testimony. Skip to verse 16. And you shall be betrayed both by parents and brothers and kinsfolk and friends. And some of you shall they cause to, put, to be put to death and you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But they shall not a hair of your head perish. May the good Lord bless the reading of his word. Let us take time to pray before we go into the study. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, thank you, dear Lord, for yet another opportunity to reflect upon your word and hear you, to, hear you speak to us one more time. As we go into your word, how we pray, dear Lord, that your return may draw nearer each and every day, that we may be prepared to meet you, and above all, to be saved into your kingdom through faith in Jesus Christ. This is our prayer of faith. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask, Amen. As our custom is, we're just going to raise five points before we go our separate ways. And the first issue that I want us to look at is there shall come a time and for some places, this has been the case for quite a while, where the religious freedoms and human rights are going to be violated and set aside by the church and by the state. The Bible says, Jesus told his disciples that before these things happen, they shall lay hands on you. This is a scenario whereby people are going to be imprisoned. They are going to be tortured. They are going to be persecuted. This is a scenario where they are going to be picked on religious ground. And as they are picked on those grounds, they are going to be arraigned before kings and rulers coming from prisons to make an appearance. And Christ speaks to his disciples and says, such shall be the sign of my return. And when these things begin to happen, where the human rights are violated left, right and center, where the freedom of worship is a basis to be accused, then you shall know that the nearness of his return is at the door. When these things happen, they did happen in the dark ages. They shall happen again during our time before the ultimate return. At point number two, this is the other thing that the Bible says. The Bible says, when you are now arraigned before these kings, arraigned before these rulers, having been imprisoned, it shall turn out to you for a testimony. The contemporary English version puts it this way. It says, you shall seize the opportunity to testify of your faith. Some of these rulers will never make it to our churches. They'll never sit on our pews. They'll never listen to our audios or watch our channels. But it shall take that moment when they have put you on the center stage as an accused that you shall have an opportunity to testify. What has been the reason for you to do what you have done? You shall speak and say, I have no fault and give evidence to the fact that you have no fault. You have no criminal intent. You shall prove that as you state your case, it shall be an opportunity to preach. It shall be an opportunity to witness. As you look at the book of Acts, Paul was given this opportunity and as he ministered to Agrippa, Agrippa says, you have almost converted me. We shall have an opportunity to minister unto rulers and kings and hopefully lead to a conversion. God shall make it possible and we shall count it a privilege to be given center stage to speak as to what we have believed. And the good book says, when you are called upon to give an account of what you have believed, be ready to mount a reasonable defense. Be ready to mount a plausible defense on that which you have believed. Are you able to defend that which you have believed in? And at point number three. We're, we're moving pretty fast for today. You want to look at the family bonds. You know, we, we, things are going to happen at a national level. They're going to happen at a policy level. They're going to happen at a legal level. But they're also going to happen within the home. The Bible says there shall come a time 
when many of you shall be betrayed, both by parents, brothers, kinsfolk, friends. I, I want you to take note. The bond between parents and children is very strong. The bond between brothers and sisters or sisters and brothers with siblings in essence is equally strong, but maybe not as strong as the bond you have with your parents. And then the bond that you have with your extended family kinsfolk is another bond to think about. And then lastly, there's the bond you have with friends. For some friends, stick closer than brothers. These things shall begin to happen. We shall have a mass betrayal. And who shall betray the other? Parents shall betray their children. Brothers shall betray brothers. Sisters shall betray sisters and cross paths. We shall have scenarios where nephews and nieces, uncles and aunts shall betray each other. And we shall have friends betray each other. When these things begin to happen, when you cannot trust even your own parents, when you become a suspect to your own brothers, when you become an undesirable to your relatives and your friends, treat you as a persona non grata, then you shall know the return of the Lord is at the door. It is a sign. It is a sign when parents, relatives, friends, and siblings cannot trust each other. They betray each other to save their skin. When such things begin to happen, the return of the Lord is at hand. At number four, here's the other interesting one. The Bible does not say when you have been uh, betrayed and you have been imprisoned, the prison doors are going to wind open as was the case with uh, Paul and with Peter. No, 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 no. It is very clear. And some of you, and some of you shall be hated of all men and they shall cause you to be put to death. They shall cause you to be put to death. It is a probability, a significant probability that some of us are going to die for this faith that we have chosen. It is a possibility and we need to accept it. I could be the next death candidate of persecution. And it could be you. When these things happen, then you shall know the Lord is at hand. With this probability of being put to death, with this reality of being hated across the territory, across countries, across continents. Why are we being hated? It is for his name's sake. Now it is profitable. It is fashionable to associate with the name of Jesus Christ. But for his name, there shall come a time when people shall be persecuted. For his name, there shall come a time when people are imprisoned. For his name, there shall come a time when people are arraigned before the courts. For his name. There shall come a time when people shall be put to death. And when that happens, see it as a sign. See it as a sign. The Bible says, by your patience, you shall save your souls when these things are happening. Do not just despair, but look at them and say, by my patience, not by retaliation, I shall save my soul. Patience, patience. Amidst affliction and persecution, patience. I miss violation of your rights, patience, for great is your reward. And here is the guarantee that we end on at point number five. You want to notice what the Bible says. It says, but there shall not a hair of your head perish. You know, God does not just guarantee life. When you look at the book of John chapter 3, the verses 16, whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but not just him, his hair as well. It is not just numbered. It is guaranteed. You may die. Having been executed, you know, the court will give an order. You send us to death, you may die. But your hair will not perish. That is just but temporal. But you are guaranteed of life eternal. And your hair is guaranteed of life eternal. I love the word of the Lord. It is sure. It is dependable. It is bankable. As we look at these signs, we want to reflect upon the five signs. We have points that we have covered. Number one, there shall come a violation of religious and human rights. That time shall come. Number two, we shall be given a rare opportunity to witness from the podiums when the gospel shall move from the pulpit to the docks. And we shall witness from there with everyone captive to listen to the word of God. And at number three, there shall come a time when family bonds, family I mean, friendship bones shall be severed, they shall be cut when people will not tolerate each other. But 
They shall betray one another left, right, and center. When these things happen, we shall be hated en masse and hated by all men for his namesake. Not for our deeds, but for his namesake. When we are hated at that level, we shall be executed and the probability of death is high. It is significant. And should anyone lose their lives on this account, they are guaranteed life. They will not perish, but even the flock of their hair will not perish. As we reflect upon these signs, we continue to lift our heads for our redemption draweth nigh. Permission to pray with you as we part. Kind and gracious Father in the heavens above, thank you, dear Lord, for reminding us through your word that you are still coming to take us home. We lift our heads, hopes, and hearts towards thee. May you not disappoint us in that day. We look forward to hear you saying, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter ye into the glory of the Father. You shall not perish, and neither will any of your hair perish. In Jesus' name we believe this promise. Amen.